Version 3.5 was a significant update to the C Sharp language and the .NET framework. And we used some of those features yesterday. Today we are going to look at Link, which was introduced with that version. And there's another feature that I want to at least mention and just give you a brief demonstration on called Anonymous Types. As the name implies, it is anonymous. We cannot reference the data type of an anonymous type. However, we can create anonymous objects, and the compiler will sort everything out. But since we don't have a data type to uh, specify whenever we declare an anonymous object, we have to use the var keyword, then followed by the name of our variable. And then to create an anonymous object, the syntax is very simple. We use the new keyword, followed by an opening curly brace, and then we have a set of property and value pairs, kind of like key value pairs. So if we wanted to create a lightweight person object, we could do first name as the property, and then we would set a value for that. We could also do last name, set the value for that. But we can't specify any uh, methods or anything like that. We can only set properties and they don't have to be strings. The values can be numbers or date time objects or just about anything that we want to use. Once you've created an anonymous object, you can use it like just about any other object. You can see the first name and last name properties and we would see other properties if we had specified those. But the only methods we do have access to are the ones inherited from the object data type. So uh, none, of the, none of these are really all that helpful. So there is that limitation. There's also the limitation that this is an anonymous object. So if we passed it to another method, we would have to pass it as an object. And of course, we couldn't cast it back to the anonymous type because it is anonymous. But there are some uses for this type of object. I did a quick tip for NetTuts uh, maybe a year and a half ago uh, where we used anonymous objects as a set of key value pairs. And I've used them personally for uh, database usage for creating parameters for queries or stored procedures. Uh, the ASP.NET MVC framework uses them to create HTML attributes for elements. So there are some uses for these anonymous no objects. And don't confuse anonymous objects with something like dynamic. Yes, there is a dynamic data type in C Sharp 4, but um, the anonymous types are not dynamic. So that is anonymous types and objects. If we get a chance to use them within our examples with Link, then we will do so. And before we get into Link, I want to show you some code I wrote. It's a collection of employees. We have an owner, a manager, a couple of sales clerks, and a couple of stalkers. Uh, stalkers, not stalkers. If they were stalkers, we might have to use our fire method. Um, but they are stalkers. So this is a collection that's supposed to represent some type of data store, or at least data that was obtained from a data store, and it is being stored as I enumerable. I'm doing this on purpose so that we don't have any of the methods of like the list class or anything like that, so that we can use just the pure extension methods provided by Link and see how powerful that they are. So let's go ahead and collapse that. And before we do anything with Link, we need to use the namespace to do so. Because all of the extension methods that are used with Link reside within the system.link namespace. And one thing I didn't mention whenever we talked about extensions, uh, let's see, shape utility. The shape utility class is within the namespace of my first project and my first data types. And whenever we use that within our program.cs, we are already using that uh, namespace. But if we got rid of that namespace, we would no longer have access to either the shape utility class or the static extension method. So we would not be able to call is polygon on a shape method because we got rid of that using statement for the namespace. So we do have to at least reference the namespace so that we can use those extension methods. And that's why we added system.link because the extension methods provided by link are within the system.link namespace. Link stands for language integrated query. 
It's a query syntax that we can use to query just about anything using code. We can query objects, which is what we are going to do today. We can query XML or generate XML. We can also query Microsoft SQL databases using link. So we have two ways of doing that. We can use a query syntax or we can use extension methods and we will use both of those today. First we will look at the query syntax and whenever I use the query syntax I typically name my variable query and then we need to initialize the query and we do so by using from and then the variable that we want to use inside of our query. Um, so for example we are going to query the employees object. So the employee variable is something that we can use to do comparisons or some other type of conditions and then selecting the employee. So um, this looks a lot like the for each. So var employee in employees. Of course the two differences are we don't have to specify the data type in the query syntax because that is automatically inferred by the use of the object that we are wanting to query and then we have the use of from so it's a little bit different especially if you are familiar with SQL uh, which stands for structured query language which is used to query relational databases this is extremely different than uh, SQL but there are some similarities between link and SQL okay so we have from employee in employees so it, it's kind of like for each employee in employees we can say where the employee first name equals John I know we have at least one of those select the employee so let's use a for each loop I should have kept this for each employee in query I formatted that horrible but thank you Visual Studio for doing that for me uh, let's do console dot write line I'll get it right eventually and let's do employee first name and concatenate that with the last name now yeah let's get rid of this here let's go to person and let's create a full name property because you know we might want to have a full name so let's call this full name and it is going to get return the first name and last name concatenated but we need to get rid of employee and employee so now every person object will have a full name property and it's going to concatenate first name and last name great so let's go back let's get rid of this and do employee full name and if we run this we should just see one John Doe just to show you how nice this is we did this in three lines of code let's look at what it would take if we were actually just going to write it out not using link and I first create a collection, a list in this case, it really doesn't matter what collection it is as long as it is a collection, and then we loop over the employees collection, getting each employee, comparing first name to John, and then if that's true then we add the employee to our second collection. So instead of three lines, we had to do it in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines. So we saved ourselves five lines of code. And I tell you what, I would much rather read this because this is certainly more readable than looking at what this code is doing here. But we can actually write this in even less code using the extension method approach. And since these are methods, we don't have to do the from employee in employees. We simply just have to start with the object that we want to query. And then there is a where method, but there are many other extension methods. Uh, I'm not going to go over all of these because there are many extension methods, but there is one called where, and then we supply it a Lambda expression. And we want to do the same thing where first name equals to John 
and then that's all that we have to do. There is a select method, but we don't have to specify that, and we don't have to, because each of these extension methods return an I enumerable collection. So after where executes, it's going to select all of the employee objects based upon the criteria that we provided, and then it's going to assign that new collection to query2. So if we do query2 within our loop, we will see the same results. Now one thing I do need to point out, when using link, either using the query syntax or using the extension methods, whenever these statements execute, the resulting collection is not assigned to the query or query2 variables. That's not done until we get to the for each loop, but you can force that to be done immediately by using another extension method. Uh, you can do a to list or to array. Either of those methods will force the collection to be created and assigned to the variable. And in case of the query uh, syntax, you would wrap that with parentheses, and then you would use the extension method to array or to list. So do keep that in mind. Sometimes that does affect how you write your queries and many times it doesn't at all. So just keep that in mind. Also don't be fooled by the terseness of the extension method approach as opposed to the query expression approach. Yes, in this particular case, extension methods were the easiest way to go, but that's not always going to be the case. There are times when the query expression is going to be much more simpler than using extension methods. And I can think of joins. Using joins can get very hairy using the extension methods while being quite elegant. Well, maybe not elegant, but easier to write and read using query expressions. So the idea is use whichever one is appropriate for the task at hand. Use extension methods if you can get it done in a few method calls. Otherwise, use the query expression. Well, let's do something a bit more advanced because selecting an employee by their first name is rather easy to do. And we'll do the query expression first, and then we'll look at the equivalent using the extension methods. So let's do a group by. Let's group all of the employees according to their position. So we want to group the employees by employee.position. And that's all that we have to do with that. Very easy. And we need to modify our loop because we are no longer getting an I enumerable of employee. We are actually getting a kind of key value pair. We're getting an I grouping. And so let's change this to group. The first thing we need to write to the console is the group itself. So we need the key of that. Then we need a for each to get each employee in the group. We are writing the employee full name and that should work. Let's look. That's a bit jumbled, so let's add some formatting. All we need to do is add an extra line after we are done printing out each of the employees by their group. And there we go. That's a lot easier to read. The owner is John Doe, manager Jim Donald, so on and so forth. So let's look at how we can do that using extension methods. Uh, we don't need the where method anymore, but we do need the group by method. And once again, we are going to use a lambda expression. So for the employee, we're doing so by position. Let's change this to query2 within our method or our loop. We can leave everything else the same. We run it and we get the same exact results. So once again, the extension methods were the way to go as far as the less code to write. But either way, whether if you go with the query syntax or go with the extension methods, they are both much shorter than writing the code manually yourself. And that's the beauty of Link. It allows us to do some very complex things without very complex code. Just, for example, this grouping. We would have to write many lines of code if we were going to do that manually. But Link did it at most in two lines of code. Isn't that wonderful? I love anything that's going to save me time writing code. And even though the query syntax kind of looks out of place within C Sharp, it's still wonderful because you can read it. It's very expressive 
and it's just wonderful. I can't say enough good things about Link. So we are nearing the end of this course. Uh, we are going to look at exception handling tomorrow because I promised that we would do that, and that is very important. And then the day after, we will finish up the course looking at how you can use the built-in debugging tools to find any particular bugs within your code because that is very important. So anyway... I hope you like Link. I love it, and I hope you get to love it too. I will see you tomorrow.